Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to a special Sunday edition of Diecast Emporium. So many moons ago, I made a video on my 164 scale construction collection, uh, which is really, unfortunately, a scale of the past for construction vehicles. However, it turned out to be one of the most watched videos here on Diecast Emporium, and one of the most requested to do an update. So there isn't going to be a whole lot of new things that you see in here. Uh, however, there might be one or two. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the collection update. Again, each of these vehicles, if you're new to my channel and you're new to the way I do collection updates, it's not going to be an in-depth review of each model, just kind of showing it to you for, for a few seconds and showing you what it can do. So the first model that we have here is a Mac R model made by First Gear in 1 to 64 scale. Now this is a great model. It comes with a dump trailer. They make these in a lot of different company colors. The doors don't open, but the hood does. And it has a respectable detailed engine inside. Also the truck, as you can see, has a headache rack on the back. Um, very nice Mac dog logo up on top. And the trailer functions very well and can achieve a pretty good dump angle there. So that is that. So the next few models will all be first gear, including this one. This is a matte granite with a Talbert Lowboy in DOT colors, DOT orange. Also with a hood open, this one has obviously the much more modern detailing inside. The low boy does have functionality, and a pretty good one is that, at that. Ramps go down. You just saw me took, take the gooseneck off. But what's important to note about this trailer in this scale is that these planks that line the board, the extension ones that you would normally deploy for an excavator or an oversized load, are molded into the casting, and they do not function. So it's still a great low boy. The newest member of the club, which is probably the oldest truck here, kind of ironic. This is a Mac F700 model, cab over. This is made by a company called Top Shelf. They do some really, really good work on their um, kind of historic old trucks, so check them out. Definitely Google them. You can see the exhaust uh, and hand and grab rails. There's even where my thumb is. Um, the old-style Mac dog logo. There is a decent range of steering, so you can at least pose the truck steering if you want to. Another cool feature is the fifth wheel is just about the same size as uh, a first gear or DCP truck, so you can lock the trailer in and uh, kind of have an old classic load going on if you want to put it on the shelf. So we're going back to first gear. Here is a matte granite dump truck. I really enjoy the paint on this. I think it looks phenomenal. This does have opening doors and an opening hood. The tarp is not functional, but you can get a pretty average range of uh, angle for the dump bed. And on the back it says keep back 500 feet. Overall, great truck. And another one that they offer in many different colors. Next, we have a John Deere articulated dump truck. Now, this has no markings on it to determine exactly what model this is based off of because it's part of Ertl's Collect and Play series. And you'll see the wheel loader right here in just a minute that's also part of that series with no markings. Uh, a lot of plastic is used here. Very little metal. Even on the camera, you can pick up what's metal, and that's just the uh, this part of the engine right here. Everything else, for the most part, is plastic. But they are very affordable, and if you just want to add some equipment to your 164 scale collection, uh, check out Tractor Supply, because they often will have a ton of collect-and-play rural products such as this. It's back into the history books with Norscott. Here's a Caterpillar D25D. Single axle articulated dump truck. This was released in the three packs back in the late 90s. Uh, good range of motion across a pivot point. Dump angle is just fine considering its age. 
and you can see the plastic cylinders will still hold a pose after all of these years. The front looks good with that old classic pyramid caterpillar logo and that famous articulated dump truck grill. Yes, it would be great if the lights had been painted, but I'm not going to nitpick about it. The next two models were from the Norscott Quarry set, first of which is this giant wheel loader. This is the 988G. Norscott updated this with the, uh, the newer trade paint, power stripe, whatever you want to call it, and then they just updated it to a 988H. But besides the paint and the graphics, it's identical, so I figured it really wasn't worth taking both of them out to show you. Great little loader. Definitely one of my favorites. Here's the other half of that set. This is the Cat 775E off-highway dump truck. And these two just look great as a pair. The dumping angle on the truck is good. And even back in 2002, they had the foresight to put the um, load lights up on top of the side of the cab, which looks good. On the other side, you have an exhaust, your air cleaner, your mirrors. Pretty solid model. As I mentioned before, here is the other John Deere Collect and Play. I think this would be based off of 744K or, or something like that, something similar. Tons of plastic used on this, very little die-cast metal. Um, that's the extent that the loader mechanism goes up and down. Um, the Z linkage only goes to there, and you can't really get a good dumping angle past that. So this might be something that you reserve for uh, a load to put on maybe the first gear low boy. Here is a Norscott 950F wheel loader. Believe it or not, for as old as this is, this is probably one of the best loaders in 1 to 50 scale you can get. Good lift height, decent dump angle. Again, this is a late 90s model, which is why all the rivets aren't painted and it doesn't have the highest quality of detail. So I have two of these just to show you. This one came on a Lionel flat car. And it has the name of Two Benny or something like that on the cab door. But in all other aspects, it's the same thing as the Norscott one. Here's a Norscott 12G scraper. Love this piece. All the functionality you would expect out of a um, grater, I think I said scraper earlier, excuse me, this is a grater, obviously, uh, is here in 1 to 50 scale, including rear axle oscillation. I like the opening engine um, hatch that's casted in. Looks pretty good. The circle and mold board, turntable, everything works good. Uh, there's a little bit of steering, not the best. But overall, a pretty solid grader model. From pretty good to pretty bad, we have a Toy State Caterpillar D11T. So this model is marketed and advertised as 1 to 63 scale, which is why it's in here. Um, however, I severely doubt that a lot. This is very much a, well, since it's made by Toy State, for lack of a better word, it is very much a toy. The tracks will roll on a surface with some texturing on it. The blade only goes up to there. It doesn't tilt forward, and it goes down to grade level. That's it. It doesn't go underneath the machine or anything. And if you notice, it doesn't have those uh, pistons right here, the double pistons that you would normally see. That said, for 8 bucks, if you want a larger dozer, um, you can still find these in most stores, actually. And many of the stores have these on clearance because they are part of the fabulous flop file. Another option is you can take the blade off completely and just pose the tractor as it's on a little boy by itself in transport mode. Next, a Norscott D6H track type tractor bulldozer, open ROPS. Again, another late 90s model. Surprisingly, 
It still will hold a pose very well even today. Laid down pretty good. And the best part is these rubber tracks, I'm going to lift the blade up a little bit, roll extremely well. So that's that one. The updated one is the D6RXL. You can see a much better casting in terms of the bucket, some wear plating down here. This visibil uh, visibility perforations should be perforated, but obviously it isn't, but that's okay. Paint's good. It still shines against the camera as the light bounces off of it. Goes up to there, goes down to there, and it will roll as well. On the back of this, you can see a drilled hole here, so if you wanted to pull a pull pan scraper or something, uh, which, again, actually Ertl makes as part of their Collect and Play series, you can plug that in there. Now, I have no idea what this dozer is. It's not marked anywhere. Um, this was part of the Road Construction Ahead series, and it came in a three-pack with the 390, um, a backhoe that you'll see in a minute, and this. So I'm not entirely sure what this is. So those that are John Deere aficionados, if you want to fill in in the comment section below, let the world know what this is. Have at it. It's a good dozer. Not the highest level of detail, but if you're not a cat fan and you're more of a classic John Deere fan, or perhaps maybe you grew up on that movie, Road Construction Head, then this is a good model to look up on the secondary market, such as eBay or Amazon. Back to the Norscott side of the street. Here you have a Caterpillar 611 traditional scraper. Very, very stiff cylinders on this. But it will go down, and it will raise up. The hand and grab rails are all plastic, nothing special there. The hydraulic lines are molded into the casting, nothing special there. But you do have a great range of turn, so you can set a pretty aggressive angle if you wish to display it on a shelf. Great scraper. A lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot, but there's a few people on Instagram and YouTube and things over the years that mistakenly identify this as a 1 to 50 scale vehicle. It is not. It is most definitely a 1 to 1 to 64 scale vehicle. So I just wanted to note that because I've had questions about that in the past. Also a Norscott piece. This is the 613C elevating scraper. Mechanism works decently. You can move it with your hand, just like that. It also raises and lowers, and this ejector mechanism, although it isn't the best, if you look right underneath the cat logo right here, you can see that it does move forward and backwards. And this one perhaps has an even better range of motion. Unlike the 611, this has a sticker on the front, so you can see a detailed grill in the Caterpillar logo, as well as lights. Here's a generic John Deere backhoe, probably based off a 310 SK or something in that range. Mostly plastic. This particular model comes with the John Deere set that you can get at a dealership. It's got a uh, Ertl low boy. I think, it's, I think it's a Peterbilt that's pulling it, but don't quote me on that. And then on the back of it is this backhoe. For it being predominantly plastic, it's okay. There's little to no movement and curl with the bucket. Other than that, if you want to curl it in. There's no extend hoe, and this is as far back as the bucket will tilt. That's it. If you put the stabilizers up and go to the loader part of a backhoe loader, that's as high as you can get. And that's as deep as it will dump. So not to beat a dead horse, but again, a model that perhaps you just use on a shelf. Here is the really, really old road construction head John Deere Ertl 310D. Love the look of this old backhoe, even though I'm not... I wouldn't consider myself a John Deere fan by any stretch of the imagination. I like some of their products. But uh, for as old as this is, pretty solid backhoe. I like the open 
area. There's no glass in here. It's all open. But what hurts this model is what hurts the plastic and much newer version of it, and that's the little to no dumping angle and the restrictions on the actual backhoe mechanism back here. All right, we'll leave him back here. To close out the three-part road construction headset, this was everywhere in the early 90s. They sold this in singles, they sold this in three packs, uh, and it sold very well by Ertl, 690 DLC. Good range of motion there. Ignore the obtrusive rivets and everything, again, considering the time period this was made. Folds up great for a transport mode, which is more than I can say for the 385 you'll see in a second. And the tracks also will roll. No problem there. So that's a great excavator. In my personal opinion, overall, the best 1-64 to scale construction model is right here. This is the Norscott 385CL. This is the second version of this release. They made a 385BL, which had rubber tracks and rubber handrails and wasn't quite as detailed as this. This features a metal undercarriage with working and rolling tracks that are spring-tensioned. The grab rails are metal. And even here on the back of the counterweight, if the light hits it just right, you can see that the lifting eyes are drilled all the way through. It's got a uh, protection over the cab. Great movement here. It'll fold up to about there, which is okay. But it's still difficult to get on a low boy at that. The digging depth, though, is very good. There you go. That's the digging depth. So even today, this remains one of the most popular 1-64 to scale models to get, and that explains its high price tag. So just a few more here, guys, and then we'll end this video. Here's a Norscott GMC, just dealer truck. They also made this in white. It is a dually in the back, which if I can get it to zoom in. You can see the Sierra and GMC logo on the back, as well as a tow hitch. <clears throat> so that's that one. Another Ertl model, which I think they make these in white and green now. I could be mistaken, but another thing you can pick up a tractor supply. Uh, this is, I believe, a Ford F-350. What's cool is it has two hitches, one here and one here. If you have a gooseneck mechanism, plug a gooseneck into that, and uh, you're good to go. Final three models I will bring out together. Here is just a little equipment trailer. This is made by Greenlight Collectibles. It's part of their Hitch and Tow series, so usually I think they're up to Series 8. It's been very, very successful. But you'll have a vehicle, and obviously you'll have a trailer. Um, the back does not open on this, but the landing gear actually functions the way a real one would. You can twist it. Uh, up or twist it down depending on if it's behind a uh, truck or if you just want it sitting stationary in your yard. The back has some pretty good highlighted details including the opening latch there, your lights, and there's even a side opening door on this side. So a very well done trailer. Here's an example of what it could look like. Not too bad. Similar uh, case here. This is a uh, another Greenlight Collectibles Hitch and Tow. This one, of course, is the trailer. Not bad at all. Get this truck out of the way. Now, you can choose to not use these at all, or you can leave them in the down position if you're loading a piece of equipment. But they are kind of fiddly, so you have to work with them. But they are detailed from the rear. As you can see, there's some texturing on that. And some simulated wood finish right here on the deck. So a great little trailer to, hold around, to haul around a skid steer. Which leads me to the last vehicle. Here is the John Deere 320E skid steer loader. 
pretty decent little machine. I like the rubber wheels. I like the fact that it has a high metal content for it being so small. Great little accessory to have around. Now, it's not going to clear any of the dump trucks that you saw, but if you were loading hay or, you know, whatever into a dually pickup truck, it can accomplish that without a problem. So that's it, guys. That is the 1 to 64 scale collection update for January 2017. I will put a link at the top of the screen to the first collection update I did of this um, that everybody wanted to see an updated one. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click that link. Um, and as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next time.